right, we're on our way to go pick up a snowmobile. Everyone wants snowmobile content, so that's what we're gonna do. It's an old one, um, it doesn't have any spark. I guess the guy was driving around last year, just died on him, so we'll see what's going on. It's really cheap, it's like 250 bucks. So we'll see if we can go pick it up. It's right in Oshkosh, so I figured I'd make a little trip out of it and uh, see if we can get it to run. So it should be a fun one. Um, we'll see if I can film when I get there. So, what do you know about this thing? You said it was your Sepsons? Yeah, it's, it's, it's his. Okay. We had another one that he just sold, but uh, yeah, we just need to get it out of here. Okay. And you don't know what's wrong with it at all? No, he was using it all last, uh, last winter, and then right at the end of the winter it stopped working, so. Okay. You know if it has compression yet still? Yes. It does? Good compression, yeah. So he thinks it just lost spark? Yeah. Okay. You know the year at all or anything like that? Um, I think I do have it somewhere. Check it out. 1980, I think. 1980. Yeah, he used to be super into the snowmobiles when he was younger, but we turned 16, he got a oh, car yeah. and he lost all interest. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> looks all here. I mean, it looks... Did it run pretty good when it ran? Yeah, I mean, once in a while he would have like a little thing would go wrong with it, but he was, he's pretty handy, he just fix it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. For an old one, you know. It's not too bad. What did he think it was, like coil or? Um, honestly, I, I don't know. I didn't okay. really talk to him too much about it. All right. All right, cool. Is price negotiable? Yeah, a little bit. I mean. Okay. What was it on there? Is it on there for? 250. 250. Yeah. I don't know if it was 250 or best offer. I didn't even look. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. How's the track on it? Uh, you ever have problems with that? The track? Do you remember? Oh, okay. Never said about it. okay. Looks pretty decent. Doesn't look ripped or anything. Okay. Hmm. Do you want me to open that up there for you so you can get a better look at it? Or no, that's fine. Um, I'm just thinking price. I mean, um, what you thinking? Like one fifty. You could do that. 150? Yeah. Alright, cool. Somebody else actually offered it and they were going to come over and get it for 150, so okay. that's fair enough. Awesome. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'll take her. Alright, we got her for 150. I'm just loading it up right now. Got her all tied down here. Get the key out of here. Well, we got the beast for 150 bucks. I don't know if you guys uh, heard the little negotiation, but uh, you could you could tell the guy wanted to get rid of it, so I just offered 150. And he actually said that there was a guy that offered 150 before and was going to come and get it, so it ended up being perfect. But we got her in the back there, looking pretty good. So we'll get her back home, start digging into it, and see why this thing lost spark. Um, the guy, as you could tell, didn't know anything about it. It was a stepson, so he uh, didn't really have any answers for me <laughs> when I was asking him questions. So it's kind of a mystery build. We don't know what's really wrong with it. Um, it just kind of shut off and didn't start back up. So it does have compression, so it gives us hope. All right, made it back home. The problem with the trailer and the hill is that we can't get up the hill with the trailer and get it back down because it just pulls the truck back down when you try to back it back down. So we're gonna try to get the snowmobile off here and pull it up the hill with the four-wheeler. <laughs> we'll see if that works. 
taking a closer look at the snowmobile. Looks pretty nice. Pretty clean. On the way back, the windshield was flying in the wind, but you can see it's just pretty flimsy. Seat looks really nice on it. I don't know what these things are worth, but I know it's probably worth more than 150. Look at those old school gauges. Pretty cool. That's not locked up. Yeah, it definitely looks clean for the for the year. Still registered. 2024. So if we can get spark, this thing will probably fire up. Well, we got her off the trailer. Now we have to get up the hill. All right, who knows, maybe she'll start up here. Let's try starting it. Wouldn't it be awesome? Yeah, she doesn't want to go. Thought maybe we'd be able to ride up the hill. <laughs> Wishful thinking there. All right, we made her in the garage. Got her up the hill, that worked out pretty good. Then we got her on rollers, so we can easily move this thing around. So there's the look, looks pretty sweet. Look how nice that seat is. I believe it's all original. Pretty cool. Let's just check this thing out. Oh, nice storage in the back. Now can I get it close again? That's the question. These gauges are really cool. <laughs> so we've got Speedo. I don't know what that is. And that's the RPM gauge. What would that be? It's not marked. But there's 3,678 miles on it. It's got hand warmers on and off button right there. Choke. Uh, high and low for the lights. Parking brake. On and off, push button, throttle control. The only thing I see it's missing is the little piece right here for the side rail. Not bad for 150 bucks. Track looks pretty decent too. Doesn't it? Looks pretty new. Looks really new. Not beat up at all. Cool. What's here? Got gas and oil level right here. See if we can see the gauge. Where are we at? Kind of hard to see. Uh, 
a little over a quarter tank. I think we're almost half tank. And then right here, I believe that's where the gas goes. Yep. Use regular gas, it says. Cool. So overall, really doesn't look that bad at all. I think we got this thing for a steal. It's ugly, <laughs> really ugly, but if it runs for 150 bucks, that's definitely worth it. So let's take a look underneath the hood. You can set that right there like that. So we've got the Articat Spirit engine in here, dual cylinder. Two stroke. Huh. Pretty cool. Looks like there's fuel getting to the line, to the fuel pump. So that's good. I'm guessing this is oil. Yeah, there's no oil in there. <laughs> but apparently, this thing lost spark. So I'm wondering if it's something with the coil or what. So we'll have to see. But it looks like he got new NGK boots on here. Compression feels pretty good. Definitely not easy to pull over. Air box is on there. I believe that's the original air box. We'll have to check out the air filter. Looks like you just take this spring off. <laughs> Looks like this was all taped, the intake. With stuff, must have been leaking at one point. Same with that part of the intake right there. So maybe it's just the ignition or something weird, you know? Could be the ignition, a wire pulled out or something. But we'll look into everything. We'll see if we can get this thing fired up today. It's not a bad looking machine. It does not look like it was abused, so we have some hope there. If we can get spark, I think this thing will fire up. But uh, let's start with the spark plugs. We'll get those out, lube up the cylinders, and we'll check for spark. All right, let's get these plugs out of here. Let's see what these are looking like. Hopefully we have compression in both cylinders. So this is the right plug. It's pretty white at the tip, doesn't it? This is the left plug. That one's nice and black, so I wonder if that cylinder wasn't running. See that? Look at the difference there. So we'll see, maybe one has spark, one doesn't. You never know. See if we get anything for spark here. Okay, I hope you guys can see that. And what we might do, put a little oil down the cylinders before we do this. It's been sitting for a little bit. Check for spark. Let's see if you guys see anything. Turn the key on, probably. I'm not seeing anything for spark.
nothing at all for spark huh all right so we've got absolutely no spark here let's just see if i play with the ignition maybe like a half ignition let's see right here if it goes so like a parking brake that's on Yeah, we're not getting anything. Nothing for spark. Let's see the kill switch messing things up. Those go into looks like a CDI right here. Or like a voltage regulator. I think it might be a CDI. Possibly a CDI problem, maybe. But we'll check all the easy stuff first and we'll go from there. But he's definitely right, there's zero spark. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is bypass the ignition. There are two ignition pieces right here. You can see the two cables. They lead up to the ignition up here, where the key goes. So I'm guessing when you touch them together, that's on. So we'll put a wire connecting both of them together, and uh, we'll see if we get any spark. All right, we just got this wire kind of twist in here. Actually, let's first see if it sparks without them connected here. Then we know if they need to be connected or not. No spark. Nothing. So now... I think they do need to be connected. So we will connect these with a wire here. Let's see where they go. Ah. All right, those are connected. Let's see if we have any spark now. Come on, baby. Have something. Nothing at all. Hmm. That's really weird. So it doesn't look... Look like that was the problem. So we can cross that one off our list. So the switch must be working. All right, no spark. So let's go into the kill switch and try to disconnect that. Or we can probably follow the wires and see where they connect. Because maybe that's not working. All right, so this whole plastic piece just comes off. This little screw was right down here. So now we can get this whole thing off of here. It looks... There. That was plugged in to the kill switch right there. So, I believe... Let's see, off. I don't know if that's connecting them or disconnecting them. <laughs> We'll check both. We'll put the wire in between both of them, connect them. We'll see if we have spark, and then I guess right now we can check as well. Right now they're disconnected from each other. Let's see if we get any spark with it disconnected. Nothing. Nothing from either one. And ignition is still connected. We'll try disconnecting ignition. Nothing. 
So it must have to be connected. So it must connect the wires together. All right. Maybe there was just a bad connection. <laughs> Highly doubt it, but we'll see. Wouldn't that be awesome if it was the kill switch? Here we go. Tell me the truth here. Nothing. Nothing at all. Those are definitely connected. Nothing at all. All right, so the kill switch we know is working up here because we bypassed that. So let's just see if it's working down here. So the black and brown wire are supposed to connect when the button's up. We know that. So we follow the brown and the black down here. And when we push the button up, we should hear a beep. And we do. So we know that's working down there as well. So kill switch and ignition switch both check out. So it's not that. All right, so looking over at the parking brake, I think this is just mechanical. So you can just push the button and that flips back out. I looked underneath here and it's just wires going to the, the high and low light beam. So I don't think the parking brake doesn't even, besides put it in park with the brake. So I think it just stops it like that. So I think that's just mechanical. I don't think it does anything. So I don't think it's that either. So I don't know if we have a ground issue. We'll, we'll have to look and see where the grounds are on this. But um, we'll check every connection. One thing I do want to check quick before we go on any further is let's just put some different plugs in. It could just be the spark plugs. It could just be a faux plug. Not sparking at all. Let's just see what happens here. See if this one sparks at all. Nothing. Those are both connected. No spark on that one. Hope to check the boots as well. Nothing at all. Try a different spark plug. Got a bunch of different spark plugs we can try. But um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's gonna do anything. It's almost like a ground issue. Not getting anything, either plug. Nothing. So, I think the spark plugs are fine. I don't think it's that. All right, time to check out the coil here. Let's see. So that wire goes into here from the bottom. One from the top, make sure that's all secured in there. Looks good. Oh, what is that? That wire is disconnected from the coil. I don't know if I did that, or if it was like that. I think it was like that. What the heck? That could be a problem right there. Should I hold it up to it and just see if it sparks? <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Oh, we might get lucky here. Wouldn't that be awesome? All right, I'll probably get shocked holding this up to it. See if I can at least poke it on there. Oh, it's kind of sketchy. It's a lot of voltage. I don't know if I can get it to it. It's pretty. The piece of metal right there. Let's try that. Oh, we're gonna have to take off the coil, I think. Get that wire rerouted. It's too hard to hold it. But yeah, that wire is definitely disconnected from it. 
We'll clean up the grounds too while we're in here. So that could also be a potential problem, but it's not gonna spark with the wire and the coil coming out. Let's see what we got. You can see that wire is supposed to go in there. So it ripped out. We might have to dig that out a little bit. See if we can get that to reattach in there. But yeah, it's definitely clean, cut off. I'm guessing you hit a bump and it rattled loose out of there. And that's why it didn't spark. So we'll get this detached and then we'll try to solder that back on. All right, so we just have to dig out that little bit right there. See if we can get it to expose the wire. I don't want to wreck the wire. I don't want to wreck the coil either. But you can see it's just glue. It's like hot glue. <laughs> Which is good. You can see it's becoming exposed. What's underneath here? Oh yeah, a big chunk of it. Oh yeah. It's coming. And when we do this, we don't want to solder it too much because we don't want to heat up the coil too much. So we got to be careful with that as well when we do solder it. Have to get enough of this exposed. That looks pretty good. Just another little chunk out of there. There. Now we have to just trim up that white wire a bit. That's gonna go right there. Like that. All right, let's get this soldered up here, if we can. Where do we want that? Right there, Bo? Not sticking. Hmm. There. That's stuck. All right, that's on there pretty good. It's not coming off. All right, let's go test her out, see if we have spark. All right, we've got the coil back on. Moment of truth here. That has to be the problem, right? I mean, what else would it be? Let's see if we've got spark. Here we go. Oh, yes. yes. Great spark. That it is awesome. Check that out. Hope you guys can see. We officially have spark. That is a great feeling. So that was that was the culprit. Broken wire on the coil. That was super hard to see. So I'm guessing the guy's stepson probably tried to diagnose this thing 
and didn't see that broken wire because it was kind of hidden. So that was the culprit. Glad we looked at the coil. <laughs> That's sweet. All right, let's get the ignition back together and uh, we'll see if this thing fires up. All right, so we've got good spark. That is awesome. We now have hope. Let's do a quick compression test on each cylinder to see what we're working with before we put the plugs back in. It'll be interesting to see what we have. Take the plugs out. Before we, before we crank it over anymore, let's quick check out the air box. See what that air filter looks like. It has been sitting for a while, so I'm hoping there's no mice or anything in there. Let's see, kind of a weird spring setup here. All right, I'm gonna end up breaking this if I try to get it off, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. Looks clear. So, yeah, not a single speck of anything in there. We'll put that back on. I don't want to break it. All right, we're gonna start with the right cylinder for the pressure test. Do this one first. Let's see what we got. See what we get here. Throttle open. Almost 150. And I probably could have pulled more, but this rope is getting kind of frayed. Frayed's gonna snap, so. That one's good. Let's see about the other cylinder. That one definitely has enough to start. <laughs> Usually with these twin cylinders you want over 120. So we're in good shape there so far. See what we get for this one. Again, throttle open. Oh, the rope snapped. Are you kidding me? Oh, dang it. I knew that was gonna happen. The rope was all frayed. But we were over 120 easily. 130 after like the third pull, so we're good there too. Ah, that rope snapped, that's such a bummer. All right, so now we've got to get that rope out of the recoil area down here. So we gotta take that off and fix that up, but look at that. It was getting frayed pretty bad. All right, time to take this guy off. Just a couple 10 millimeter bolts holding that on. Actually, one more up here too. You really have to take that off too. This off? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think you gotta take that cover off of there. Uh, there we go. We got her. 
Oh, the rope didn't even go all the way back down. Cool. So if we just push that rope up, we should be good. And tie that off. Now we can put that back on, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's gonna be long enough. Actually, you know what, does that go through there? I've gotta tie it after I get it through here. Cause I can't fish that through that small hole. So we'll get this back on and then I'll fish it through. All right, we got the recoil rope fish through here, underneath that little tab right there. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go right there. And it's not hitting anything weird now. And then for this, the other part's frayed, so I just flipped it around. So when you pull up, it doesn't hit the rope. See how that part's frayed right here? So I just, <laughs> just rotated that around a little bit. And now the rope's not getting frayed. So that's fixed. All right, let's get the spark plugs back in and see if this thing fires up. I guess we should see if there's any gas in it. Let's see, it's getting gas. We gotta get oil in it too. Let's see, where does the gas go in? I think it's right here. So we'll see if it's getting any gas. It looks like it is. There's gas in there. So we'll take that off, pump it over a couple times. We'll see what that gas looks like. We might have to do a gas flush. But he said it, he said it was running last year, so. We will see. I believe this is where he put the oil. There's no oil in there. Guessing that one goes there. Yeah, I don't think that can even fit over there. All right, well, should we try to fire it up? Let's see what happens here. All right, here we go. Let's see, full choke. Fired up. That is awesome. <laughs> so that was the fix. That's, <laughs> what was that, second pull? That's crazy. We gotta get some oil in it though before we do anything else. We don't want to uh, blow this thing up, so let's pour a little oil down there. Two stroke oil going in. See the line from here goes down into here and goes back up through the tank. It's kind of a cool design. You can see the level right there. Definitely cool. And that gets pumped 
Or does that get pumped into you? Down here. Down into there. There's an oil pump down there. You can kind of see it. And that gets pumped to right here. So you can see the oil pump down here. Gets pumped into here, into the intake. So yeah, pretty cool. And that gets, I don't know what happened there. Ah, I wonder if this thing takes premix. Cause that's supposed to attach to that carburetor right there. That's broken. So the pump isn't pumping. So let's see if we can fix that quick. See that? That's supposed to be in there. See that rod? That's supposed to be in here. So when you hit the throttle, it moves up and down and pumps. And it wasn't doing that. So let's try to fix that quick. All right, check that out now. See how the rod's moving now? That's how it's supposed to be. So that just came out of place. I'm wondering if he tried to bypass the pump and that's why there was no oil in it. And then he just pre-mixed the gas. That's kind of what I'm guessing, but. Well, at least it's working now. That's kind of cool. All right, I think this thing is all ready to go. Should we go take it for a test drive? See if it moves at all? I think we should. We'll have to see if the lights work as well. Good. Oh yeah, the light works. Keep high and low work. Oh yeah. Cool. Will she move here? Good. Running really good. Still smoking. That's good. Gauge work. I don't know if these are working or not. Doesn't really look like the gauges are working. We'll have to check. If the hand warmers are working. Oh yeah. Those work too. Cool. Brake works too.
Not bad for 150 bucks. Wow. Not bad at all. Thing runs mint. Even the gauge lights are working. Speedo does work. Tack is a little iffy. Yeah, she goes pretty good. Not the fastest thing in the world, but she probably goes 60. Clutch feels good. Doesn't feel like it's slipping. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's heavy. Yeah, she idles all day too. All right, so surprisingly, this thing's running great. Like I said, really only took me about 20 minutes to fix. Pretty easy fix for it. It was just hard to find, I guess. All right, let's see if she fires right up. Probably needs choke again. warm up for a little bit. I can see these gauges all work. So the tack kind of works. <laughs> the speedo works. But she's bouncy. Um, but yeah. Gas gauge works. Oil gauge works. And then the, the main thing, the heated grips. Those are working. Got a little air there. <laughs> Can't turn around. I think this thing's meant for jumping. <laughs> she goes pretty good though. Not too bad. the brake working too. See if I can go through here. Tight fit. Woo! Gets up to 40 pretty quick. Running great. 
warmers are kicking in. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, this thing is a pretty sweet machine. Not a bad sled. I like it. It's way better than that uh, that blue one I had. What was that, a Polaris? Way nicer than that one. Oh, it's pretty fast, too. See if she's still smoking. Make sure that oil pump's still working. Oh yeah. Cool. Thing's a little ripper. All right, just get done with the first ride. This thing absolutely flies. It's a pretty awesome machine. And um, I'm just gonna clean it up a bit and I'll probably keep it for a while. Maybe trade it for a different sled. Maybe a little bit nicer one. But this one runs perfectly, drives perfect, brakes work, everything works on it. So it's a nice sled for 150 bucks. Really can't go wrong. So it ended up being the coil wire causing all the issues. We fixed that and she fired right up, which was very, very lucky. <laughs> I don't get that lucky all the time. So I'll take it when I can get it. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.